Okay, welcome to the important session of uh, this series. We are going to talk about, I hope I am audible, please uh, let me know in case uh, audio is not good. Now, yesterday we spoke about what is spanning tree protocol, why we need it and uh, how does the spanning tree looks like. Now, given a network, we are going to see how does the algorithm that uh, spanning tree protocol algorithm works. I will show you as per the algorithm what should be the spanning tree of a given network and then we will also see how we are going to implement it by allowing different uh, bridges to take a decision you know based on how what part they are and when they join into the network when they go out of network how does this actually work okay so that will be a very interesting thing actually um, let me show you, keep this down okay so let us see now i urge you to read this book reference one section 323 about the spanning tree protocol algorithm okay i am following the example given there now just to recall your memory this whatever is there in red okay these are all land segments and these are all the bridges we call them as bridge even if they have three ports don't worry about the naming convention and we are showing that dotted line for something which is connected physically but not active in the sense this bridge is not going to forward any traffic on this line okay it may be seeing some traffic going on in this uh, land and this also it will be seeing a traffic going on this land remember always in a normal condition the traffic is going to be generated by the host connected to the lands land segments it could be anywhere any land segment and the host connected to the land may be interested in communicating with any other host on the same land or it could be that one router is here and the traffic goes out please think that it's not that we are only thinking about the traffic that is happening within the land any traffic that is going through this whole thing maybe will be maybe interested in coming out of the land and one of this land may be having a router and it might be going out to them doesn't matter we are only bothered about how are these bridges which are forming a loop in the inside the land does not or do not create any flooding of packets or frames let me tell you the issue will be too much when you have a ethernet mac you know that in the ethernet protocol we have also have a broadcast we can even broadcast to all the hosts in the network that means what whatever i am sending here should reach all the hosts connected to every lan that is there because remember one thing these are all the lan belonging to one particular network that means the network id of this ip addresses are all same and the host id will be different now when you send a mac broadcast uh, on the lan as assume that there is a you know a it admin sitting here and wants to communicate to all the hosts or all the users logged into the network to log off because they are going to bring down the entire network for some um, uh, regular maintenance perspective or maybe they are realigning something or uh, they are doing some maintenance job or updating the software running on all the bridges we don't know which could be many reasons or maybe power is going off they are going to shut down the entire network then you need to save all your work so you are all logging into the lan uh, or maybe server may be there and you are informing all the users to log off so that whatever work you are doing is saved so in that kind of situation you will be interested in sending a broadcast message in that case all the broadcast that is happening from one machine should reach to all the host in the lan but it should be only one copy of that going there not that the uh, broadcast is you no know, uh, circling around within the lan so that will be a, a major issue and it's called a you no know, broadcast flooding so we need to have some provision of um, blocking all these things right we need to i am not sure why i am not uh, i hope i am allowing everybody so we have to make a mechanism to make sure that we don't have any 
frames which are looping inside the lab. Now this is a given circuit and now I said that we have come up with this particular uh, configuration of okay let it be in the top only we have come up with this configuration of a spanning tree this is not the only spanning tree that we can realize using this uh, set of br bridges and lands there can be many but we have chosen this now i am going to explain to you why this particular spanning tree is chosen what was the algorithm used to come up with this particular spanning tree that means what we are we are going to introduce some new names here let me uh, explain that now now before that i want to just run one quiz to ask you maybe i will not uh, uh, now ask you to answer maybe if you can come online and tell me um, okay i already shown the answer uh, what this question is traffic or frames originate from okay where do the traffic from post originate from um, it is from the LAN segment. Okay, there is a chat. Let me see over. Very good, very good. Uh, Smaran answered. Okay, so A is the answer. Now let me maybe you can uh, tell me in case. Uh, I don't know if I say view. Does it allow everybody to come in? Uh, okay. So my other question is. Okay, what was this? None of the above. Okay. Uh, so dotted links indicate that they are broken, partially defective, wireless or none of the above. Yes, you are right, uh, Karthik, uh, Karthik Sharma. None of the above is the answer. So what do they mean actually? You know, the dotted lines in this particular uh, spanning tree. They are active. Remember, the links are active. They are not any defective uh, links. But they are disabled intentionally by the bridges. Who is disabling it? The bridges are disabling it. Remember, None of the hosts connected to the LAN have any way of disabling the link to a bridge. It's a bridge's decision that I am not going to forward anything on this particular port. Okay. So bridge is taking a call and deciding not to send because the reason is only because of the loops formed by the bridges in the LAN causing this circular, you know, circular movement of frames. We saw that in the previous example. So we, the bridges are consciously taking a decision that I am not going to send on specific links so that the loop is not formed. Okay, that's what the daughter lines indicate. Now, what does the B3 do now? B3, does it do any traffic movement at all? No, it doesn't do because it is completely invalidated. Okay, whereas if you see the bridge B7, it is, it is okay to send on these two links. It will be forwarding it on these two links but it will never forward anything on this link uh, this is completely silent it's going to be there but going to be watching the fun that is happening in the network but it's not going to actively participate in any interaction okay what is the deactivated okay quiz is d is correct okay now three people are waiting okay what do i do I am not able to send them inside. Okay, uh, let me see whether in there I am missing anything. Okay, let me continue. I hope all of them are inside. This uh, I prefer that people not to disturb the class. Like coming in uh, is similar to what happens in the physical class. This also is disturbing the entire class. Okay, now spanning tree of a network redraw. Now I have redrawn it here. Uh, do we see a uh, tree structure here, which is the root node here? I am sure all of you are uh, able to understand that. B1 is the root node. I will tell you why we have chosen the B1. It's not that uh, just because it is connected to all the network we chose, nothing to do with the connection they have. There's a reason behind it. I will come to that. Okay, B1 is a root node. From this, what we can understand. So let me redraw. Now, let me tell you what is the property of a root node first okay before even we go into the details of um, how we chose the root node has an active path to all the LAN type nodes in the tree okay you can see any LAN you can pick any LAN in the network and you can see that there is a active path going to all of them and there is only one path uh, that also you remember there is only one path for 
each land okay if you see this, there are some lands which are directly connected to the road node some are through some bridges okay in between some bridges are there but there is a single connection okay so that's the one pro pro property of a root node now next one all the land type nodes okay we have nodes which are bridge type and land type so i am specifically mentioning land type nodes in the tree can be reached in a shortest distance from the root node see remember the shortest distance we are not actually going by forming a tree to have maximized effect of shortest possible path for all the lands okay or between any two lands it is not like a uh, uh, no shortest path uh, algorithm here we are not running any shortest path algorithm here but what i am saying is from the root node you can reach it with the shortest path but not from suppose no uh, between two lands it need not be a shortest path okay uh, suppose you are saying that i want to communicate between i and j g suppose one machine connected to this lan wants to talk to some machine here how does it go the shortest path would have been this right between these two lans the shortest path would have been passing it through b6 and going to g but how is it going to really go now because of this spanning tree protocol running the packet has to trace this path to reach g now what i am trying to tell you is the shortest path is from the root node to this but not between the two we cannot we are not trying to find out the uh, similar to uh, the algorithm that you would have seen salesman or sales person problem wherein every city is visited by the sales person uh, person in a loop and then it is the shortest path that is possible that effort all that we are not looking at it so now one example of ing talking they have to go through a different path a longer path like uh, going through a ring road or nice road rather than uh, going through the city to go there now why are we sacrificing some communication between two lands uh, sacrificing means it is going to take some time please remember when it is going through multiple bridges and multiple land segments it is going to take time but still we are doing it because we want to avoid the loop this guy has to be out of the loop okay that's the reason okay uh, so we have to pay for some um, benefits okay so there will be a cost involved so that's another uh, property of root node third one all the land type nodes can reach all other nodes in the tree through the root node i am not saying that every node will have to reach through root node only now imagine i wants to talk to j it can go like this no issue it doesn't have to go to the root node and inform them okay i am going to talk no but if at all any you know this node wants to talk to g or e or maybe c it has to go through root node okay there may be some path which is valid path when i am saying that the uh, spanning tree allows that communication to happen it can happen okay so please don't generalize this all nodes all lands have to go through the root node no that's not the reason okay uh, that's not what is uh, expected there are people waiting let uh, there are people waiting to be let in but i don't know how do i let them in let me see if there are any other interface is there one second can somebody help me where to go and look for people to let in i thought all of them are in i don't see any interface for people to be sent uh, let in okay i don't know guys let me continue let them watch the re uh, recording there okay or let me know what is uh, what is to be done in case you guys know one of you okay so let us see how do we draw this as a uh, i am not going to take too much time i am going to just redraw this whole thing uh, you can verify it or if you have a slide on your side also you can verify that i have just taken the b1 in the top and then uh, rest of the nodes and land segments are redraw okay uh, participants page i have to go through individually or what 
nothing is saying that they have to be sent in admit oh okay uh, oh it is in the top okay sorry i hope this solves the problem so i need to go sushmita okay i hope all of you are in so i have to scroll up i think okay sorry guys okay thank you thank you smran okay thank you okay now i hope this is clear to you this is you don't have to verify it i have read on the entire thing is the same original tree yes you take it from me it's actually but i have made it as a hierarchical okay now let us see how we are going to construct this okay now the algorithm stp algorithm selects ports in a bridge as follows it has to select a port now what is the selection i am talking about it is selecting the ports which are to be activated or which are to be deactivated okay the both um, okay co host uh, that's a good thing okay uh, how do i make you uh no uh, okay let me this is chat window so i should go to a control i think no what is it name okay no no man oh, okay here no right click also doesn't work i hope uh, i will take care in case if somebody joins uh, okay thanks for let us continue uh, zoom i was uh, using it long time back so sorry i forgot okay so now the algorithm selects the ports in a bridge as follows each bridge has a unique identifier first thing is now you may wonder how did i choose d1 as the root node it's all because of the id of each bridge first condition is all the bridges need to have a unique identifier you cannot have a um, uh, duplicate one another another reason is, another important thing is we should be able to compare them one is smaller than the other it's like a numerical comparison uh, actually cisco follows uh, some different uh, mechanism but you may have a bridges from different vendors and working together in a network so there should be a common mechanism where the algorithm can select okay who is going to be the root node of a particular configuration okay so that is based on the identifier of a uh, uh, bridge and here we are calling it as a b1 okay uh, b1 is uh, if suppose there was no b1 at all in the network only b2 b3 b4 was there then b2 would have been a root node here but whereas b1 is here so we have made that as a root node so that is the first condition okay the algorithm first elects the bridge with the smallest id as the root of the spanning tree first choice is who is the leader in the group okay i am calling the root bridge as a leader because root bridge is one which is providing the path for everybody to talk to each other okay all the lan segments so we are trying to find the shortest path from the root node to all the lan so that any lan can send a message to any other lan within the network now now how are we going to select the port once you select the head of this whole network or a root bridge then all the other bridges what they will do is they will try to uh, select the guy okay who, who is going to be the okay admit all this is a disturbance guys please don't join like this you know the class is there at 11:20 please be on time you are disturbing the entire class coming in whatever time you like please don't join now at least okay now once you select the root bridge now you have to select the ports now what is the uh, criteria that we are going to use for selecting the ports now okay from other bridges this uh, okay uh, one uh, let me tell you uh, we draw the port here root node i will call it the rb then we connected other bridges are there okay other bridges or lands could be there there could be a lan also directly connected to this bridge now we are going to have all the bridges all the links connected to a root bridge are default enabled okay
okay that's own condition remember once you select the root bridge based on the lowest id of all the unique ids of bridges we select one root bridge and then we also enable all the links of that particular root bridge okay there is no choice that made that i will disable one of the links to a particular root node root bridge okay that's one criteria the root bridge always forwards frames out over all of its ports that's what i am saying you can see that dark line around b1 because we are enabling all the ports of a b1 now second next each bridge computes each bridge means other than the root bridge please remember each bridge in the network other than the root bridge computes the shortest path to the root and notes which of its ports are is on this path now now what is the job done by the other bridges don't worry how, how other bridges are getting involved okay in decision making i i will come to that later right now you may you know uh, assume this is what is happening when the actual algorithm runs but let us understand what happens after that let us understand uh, the algorithm how it makes it happen okay so now this has been selected root bridge has been selected and all the links of that root bridge is enabled and now what happens other bridges are coming into play they are all connected maybe directly connected or some maybe down the line so every bridge tries to find what is the shortest path i have which port i have i can reach to shortest path to the root bridge then it enables that particular path also because if why i am worried about that because we are saying that at the end of this stp uh, protocol the root bridge is connected to all the lands okay um, imagine in our city bangalore city we have ring road then nice road right i hope the ring road is completely connected nice road i think uh, i am not sure i am not uh, keeping track of uh, the development there was some break in between somewhere uh, i am not sure now you know that if you get on to ring road somehow you can reach any part of the city right uh, i am not sure whether that is true with nice road also maybe one of you can clarify uh, i heard that there was one break small in between somewhere so that's how in this case root node root bridge is why i know that if i can reach root bridge somehow whatever frame i am getting uh, it wants to go to some other uh, land segment within the uh, uh, network if i can manage to send it to the root node root node will take care of passing it down because it is connected to all the land bridges after the stp uh, protocol has stabilized please remember stp is running and it will reach some uh, stable state then it is possible that all the frames will be sent to everybody okay every land so we have to now find out every bridge is trying to find out what may what is my shortest path and which uh, port of mine okay suppose this bridge is having multiple ports which of this port takes me to the root node root bridge with the shortest path possible okay then you enable that for sure okay so that i reach the root bridge okay i hope you understand that particular reason why we are trying to reach root bridge then we can reach any other uh, land segments in the network because root bridge knows how to send it because it has a forwarding table and it will be learning and then it will also send it will take care of sending it but on the way if you find some land you can deliver it okay it is not going to take it further but if you don't have it then then it will go on through the root bridge and then maybe it will come down okay now that port is also selected as the bridge's preferred path to the root okay preferred path that can be only one preferred path to the root bridge remember i can't have two preferred path to the root bridge that is only one for every other bridge other than the root bridge i will have one preferred path towards the root bridge and there is only one not multiple path if i have a contention i need to choose one of them there may be equi distance from uh, the root bridge and i have to choose one of them now what do i mean by distance now okay you know that in a typical networking uh, you know across the different networks we call the router hops as the distance right hop distance and we talked about ttl getting in, in decremented every hop and then the fellow replying back for the trace route to know you know how many what are the route or routers you are going through so we know that hop is router how many routers you pass through in a between the network okay across the net internet but what is the hop count within a lan 
Okay, what is the hop count within a lab? I am sure by now you could have guessed it. What do I mean by the distance between two lab? Okay, imagine this is a lab. Okay, and this is another lab. I will uh, follow the convention of our symbol. Can you tell me what is the distance between these two? How do I count? What are these guys? They are all bridges that I have on the way. Very simple. I would have guessed it. The number of bridges that I need to go through to reach my target destination is the hop count or a distance measurement. So now suppose I told you that root bridge is selected and then all other bridges are trying to find what is the preferred path for my uh, whenever some traffic falls on this, how do I send it? I am taking a preferred path. I am, I am going to choose the preferred path based on the distance. And I told you that the distance is calculated based on the number of bridges you cross to reach the root bridge. Now imagine this is some B5 and this is some B3. Okay, let me draw clearly. Okay, anyway, I will come to that later on. Okay, or uh, let me complete it. Now, if I have a uh, different uh, bridges on the way, and they are equidistant from both, okay. From B5, remember this is B5, I have a B3 here, I have B2 here and this is a B1 which has to be, cho which is chosen as a root bridge. Now, I have a path through this to the root node, I can also go through this. Now, which one would I choose? Because both the distances are same. There should be a tie. How do I break this tie? This bridge picks the another bridge which has a lower ID compared to the other option you have. I have an option of sending the traffic through B3 and making this particular port as a preferred port or I have an option of selecting this as a preferred port for reaching the road bridge. Now both I find that the distance is same. Okay, How do I find the distance? I will come to that. Now I know that there is only one more bridge I need to go cross to reach the root bridge. Now, how do I choose which one of them to be, say, uh, chosen as the preferred uh, port or preferred bridge, okay? I will choose the, out of these two, I will choose the lowest ID guy as the preferred bridge. So, as I, that's why I told you in the beginning itself, the bridges are going to have a unique ID and they are, the provision is there that you can compare one against the other, which is lower and which is greater. Even ASCII based, uh, uh, you know, thing you can compare, right? String compare, we do the comparison of ASCII value. Similarly, here also you can do even if it is given a name, but you have to make sure that they are unique and they can be comparable. So, I will choose the one which has the lower ID. Okay. I hope this is clear to you because I cannot have a multiple path to the root. If there should be only one unique path and working path. That means that all the uh, links on that particular path is connected and they are active. So, that port is selected as a bridge's preferred path to the root. Finally, all the bridges connected to a given LAN, okay, now, now suppose you have a LAN, okay, let me say LAN A and then you have multiple bridges connected, okay, B1, B2. Now, every LAN, okay, uh, may be connected to multiple bridges. Now, bridges connected to a LAN elect a single designated bridge that will be responsible for forwarding the frame towards the root bridge. So, what I am saying is, what is the reason that every bridge is doing a selection? Because one of the bridges need to take the responsibility of sending the traffic from this land to the root bridge. Okay. See, I told you that every land segment is connected to the root bridge through some way and through the shortest path. So, I have to choose the path to the root bridge from every LAN and the, uh, who has to choose? The bridges have to say that, okay, you, uh, if any traffic is there to be sent to root bridge, please send it on to me. So, that is the reason that I am saying we need to choose a, bridge, a particular bridge to be chosen for every LAN segment which will take the packets from there to the root bridge. Okay, there will be only one bridge doing that job. Now, each LAN designated bridge, each LAN's designated bridge is the one that is closest to the root. Now, I will come to this statement. I think you can make uh, sense out of this sentence. Every LAN has a designated bridge. That means that is the bridge which is going to take any traffic from this LAN towards the root bridge. Now, that designated bridge, whatever we choose, is the shortest path to the root bridge also. Okay. 
you may have another bridge connected to the LAN and it may have the longest path. That is one option. Another option may be you have two bridges connected to a LAN and maybe you call them as B5 and B4. Okay, both of them may be having the same distance to the root bridge. Then which one will be chosen? This will be chosen. B4 will be chosen for a designated bridge. B5 will be said, okay, I will not send any traffic in this lane. A will send traffic to B4 only to root, go to the root bridge. So, two things you have to understand. I need to have one designated bridge from every land to take me any traffic towards the root bridge. Another one is if I have, and which is happens to be a closest one, and if I have two bridges to my land, and both of them are in the EQ distance to the root bridge, then I will choose the bridge which is having a lower ID for sending the traffic towards the root bridge. Okay. Is if this is taken care of, you can imagine every LAN is now connected through a shortest path with one single path towards the root bridge. That means we have guaranteed that all the LANs are connected to the root bridge. Once you guarantee that all the LAN segments are connected to a root bridge, then you are default no assuring that assure no assuring that any traffic from any segment can be reaching the other segment because it can go to land the uh, root bridge and then get forwarded okay that i hope you understand the reasoning behind why we are doing this and we are how uh, are we achieving that every land is connected only to a single path okay if you trace through the st uh, spanning tree you will find only a single path from any land to any other land there will not be a multiple path there won't be any loops. If there are, it will be disabled and we make sure that there is one single path only the packets go through. If two or more bridges are equally close, that's what I mentioned already, to the root, then the bridges identifier, bridges identifiers are used to break ties and the smallest ID wins. Okay, I hope this is clear. Let's just redraw the spanning tree again following this algorithm. Now, assume that this algorithm is known to you and you are given a job of formulating this particular path. Now, for a moment, imagine that you have just connected all of them, the dot, dot lines are not there and dotted lines are not there, okay. You are given a uh, this tree, given all the bridges and then asked you to find, remember all the uh, algorithm points that we have come up with and try to build the spanning tree which will be same as what we have chosen here. For a moment, do not think that this you are aware of this dotted lines or the solid lines. Now, looking at the particular picture, which one will you choose for the root bridge? Very clear. You look at all the bridge numbers and then choose the lowest one. Okay. Now, that is very clear. You can choose it. Okay. Now, B1 is chosen as a root bridge. Okay. Now, what is the next, next point we thought? We, remember, uh, we uh, learned. All the links to the bridge, root bridge, we should be default enabled. Okay. So, let me draw that now. Uh, B1 is connected to E. Then it is also connected to G. You go from uh, the picture. Uh, no, you start from here. I am just going like this. Okay. And H, F, D. Okay. We went uh, anti-clockwise and made sure that all the LAN segments connected to the B1 are enabled. Okay, then we are hierarchically bridging the uh, building the graph. Please don't think that this is a larger distance from H. Okay, is uh, just for the convenience I have put it. Uh, I taken a lot of effort in drawing this stage by stage, showing in animation because that will make things clear. A uh, lot of effort went into this uh, preparing these slides. Okay, so all of them are at the EQ distance from bridge directly connected. All the LAN segments are directly connected. Now you are taken care of, what are the lands you are taken care of? Our aim is to make sure that you reach the root bridge in the shortest path and first thing what you should do is, if it is directly connected, would you even go to some other place and come here, you will directly connect. Now root bridge is taken care of, all the directly connected lands are taken care of. Now you worry about other lands which are farther away, one hop away, okay. One hop away means there is one more bridge is going to come on the way. So let us now go one step. Now we have to find the shortest distance because very easy for us. We know uh, what is the shortest path and we can resolve it. So let us do it. Okay. Now let me choose the LAN C. Okay. I am now interested in finding the shortest path from C 
to my root bridge. Okay. Okay. Now, what are the ways I can reach here? I have two ways. I can come like this and land here or I can come like this and land here. Right. Now, our aim is not to find the shortest path from one land segment to other land segment. Other way, you would have connected these two. Do not do that. Okay. We always select the land segments which are connected directly to the root bridge and then we will look at other lands and try to find the shortest path to the root bridge. Now, there are two paths. Are they same? Now, this two, this path, right, I will call it as a P1. Okay, I will call, sorry, I call this as a P1 path and a P2 path. Are they equidistant from each other? Oh, sorry, from the root bridge? No, because this path actually takes two halves, right? These two, two bridges are there on the way before I go to B1. Whereas I can reach B1 with a one hop also. So naturally, I will choose this path for this particular connection. Now, I am not taking a decision because this is a lower ID. Please remember, even if this was a B10, okay, which was not there anywhere, B10, I would have chosen this, okay. I am going to, what I am thinking of, you know, question paper is still yet to be made. Let me just, people are asking for model paper, but let me tell you what I am thinking, okay. I actually, I actually, in fact, asked the students also to come up with some interesting question. Nobody came up. Um, what I am saying is, I will give you maybe uh, not with a dotted line and a solid line, okay, uh, single, simple lines, okay, and give you some bridge numbers, okay, randomly. I may even change this number. Okay, same network with a different uh, bridge numbers. Now, you have to come up with the spanning tree algorithm using this algorithm. Okay, uh, I think that will be very like a puzzle and I am sure you will enjoy it because I got a feedback in the last IA1 exam that question was too easy. I think challenges will make life, you know, interesting, right? Uh, so, I am not going to make it too hard that, you know, you find it uh, confusing and uh, I will give you enough, uh, you know, training and then you challenge it. It's like, you know, it is good for you, okay. Uh, gray matter will be activated, right. So, I am just thinking that this could be one possible way of uh, asking you to draw the uh, root, you know, this uh, particular picture, uh, spanning tree based on the algorithm, okay. So, now I know from C I can reach to this, okay. So, let me complete it. Done. Now, I am not taking a decision that, no, uh, actually, I can take a decision here, right? Once I have chosen a, for this land, designated bridge is this, right? Then I have to make sure that this fellow is not in the loop. B3 is not in the loop in, you know, taking some traffic. So, this daughter line should have, should happen immediately. Once I choose that particular bridge as a designated, B2 as a designated bridge for C. See, remember one thing, there should be only one path from any land segment to the root bridge, okay, there should be only one path, I cannot have another path, so default I have to make it with this dotted, okay, but whether to make this dotted is again is logical, if I make this dotted, if I make it solid, what is the use, right, any traffic coming here will be hanging here, you know, unless the other side is land, some other land is there, suppose I have another land connected, yes, I, I cannot default say dotted, Actually, once I make this is dotted, I think default this also becomes dotted, not, you know, in this particular scenario, okay. Please use common sense here, okay. Even algorithm doesn't say everything. Uh, you can use a common sense, right. Okay, now my next choice is I want to choose, okay, uh, a path for this guy, B. Where is this, you know, you have to come back here. See, look for the B. B is here and then try to find the path that I can reach to B1 because that is uh, our uh, root bridge, right? I have two paths. Now, uh, we have a, a scenario wherein equidistance paths are there from this bridge uh, land to a root bridge. I have both B5 and B7 taking me to the root bridge with a single hop. Which one do I choose? You know that tie has to play. Uh, now, which algorithm is being used now? Tie is coming and then we are breaking the tie between B5 and B7 and choosing the B5, right, because B5 is lower than B7. So, now, that's what we are thinking now. The square box says that we are thinking now, I have an equal path distance from uh, B to B1, so I will choose 
b5 and what do i do default if i choose b5 then i have to make whatever i am connecting to b7 i have to make it dotted line okay default it is there is no other go i have to make it dotted okay i am not showing it in the sig picture so in the right side but uh, left side is already there okay that decision has been taken now that is that now what about a okay i am uh, what about a now look at a now you can also see don't think that okay this is already dotted or something but this path is big much bigger than what i can reach here and because of that i am not going to choose b3 okay from a's perspective b5 is the best option uh, with a single hop i reach here i have two door hops so b5 is the selected uh, designated bridge for a also okay so that happens and b3 remains now once i choose both a and c um, we are not going to use this b3 at all then b3 is invalidated okay that uh, that's what happens now what about k now where is k k is here so that k can go through this there is no other way right it cannot do any other option it doesn't have any other option so you can just draw that uh, solid line and then what do you have h h oh sorry h is already connected uh, what was that after k what do you have uh, i let us look at i now you can go like this to the root bridge you can go like this to root bridge equidistance both are one bridge coming on the way now which one i'll choose naturally tai is coming and b4 is the lower bridge so i select that so that is also decision is taken and what about our friend j j anyway has no other go it has to go through b4 only okay so be very non trivial so entire bridge entire spanning tree is now constructed this is how you construct it given a knowledge and given the topology of the entire network but that is not true when these bridges are coming up and they are actually it's not you human being is not going to do this job remember the software running on each of the bridges are going to do the job now you have to write the algorithm which runs on each of the bridges which is stp algorithm of course and then you have to exchange some messages now i told you initially to start with that bridges do not even know that other people exist now i am telling that you have to choose the root bridge you have to choose the lowest bridge that means what all of them need to talk to each other right all the bridges have to talk to each other and everybody should know about who are all existing in that particular network and choose the one who is the elected root bridge of the entire network so that means what they they have to send some packets across that means even if it is dotted line sometimes when there is a broken uh, stp or even stp is not stabilized they all be active all the links to every bridge every lan will be active and the traffic not traffic this stp algorithm packets will go through it that's why you see in a, a packet tracer some stp packets are coming and periodically it's not only just one time you do and then you think that everything is going fine no uh, in the middle some bridge can go fault faulty or some links can go uh, out of uh, uh, service so it has to be dynamic and it should be running periodically that means stp running Uh, continuously okay that's what we are going to see now next so so even if the dotted path were shorter we can't choose it right okay uh no dotted you are see it is other way around dotted is coming because you have chosen some path as the shortest path okay um it's not the other way you know dotted came later on to start with everything was solid line not thick line it's solid line links are there are active everything is active now we are applying the Uh, designated bridges for each lan and then we are finding the shortest path and we are breaking the tie if the bridge numbers are uh, equal distance from uh, through towards to no sorry uh, uh, for an example i from i you can reach root bridge you know uh, uh, same distance and we choose one then we make it dotted please remember the dotted comes later no, not before okay i hope i answered your question uh, let me know in case if you are still having doubt okay now you get the same spanning tree that we have re, you know drawn earlier okay this is how it is constructed now i have convinced you how to come up with this spanning tree now our main a, a worry is how will i make it happen that without any human intervention the whole thing happens and even if something fails in the middle still a new spanning tree is formed 
okay that will be the next topic that we are going to talk now okay okay good uh, it was avishi okay now designated bridges of land segment now let me tell you by looking at this i want you to now uh, i will ask a question you can think about it in the answer as an answer and then um, we can verify it whether you are right or not okay you can just write it down okay now i am going to ask you um, i think i am going to have a table okay root bridge is very non trivial you can come up with the root bridge okay now i am going to fill the table or i am asking you to fill the table okay with a designated bridge for each of the land segments okay so let us start with each segment uh, land segment and then please write it on your paper what do you think is a de designated bridge for each of the land segment now let me i am sure you will be able to do that for a who is a designated bridge for a designated bridge what is the definition of designated bridge the bridge that i will use to send the traffic towards the road bridge okay that's my designated bridge i'm not talking about from a i reach b or c or d no my aim is all in my life you know aim in my life is to somehow get connected to the road bridge then my problem is solved so every land tries to have some bridge which will take take it to the root bridge then the root bridge will take care of sending me to uh, wherever i want now can you select the designated bridge over b i'm sure all of you would have already come up with the number okay say now what about c very clear b2 now what about d is there a designated bridge remember if you are directly connected to root bridge okay it's like a secretary of prime minister or somebody they don't have to go through someone to talk to the prime minister right they can directly talk so you do not have a designated bridge you cannot call the root bridge as a designated bridge because you cannot call rb as he is a boss of this particular thing he or she is a boss of this particular network and i can reach directly so i don't have a designated bridge for those land segments which are directly connected to the root bridge now you can fill remaining entries directly it doesn't have a designated bridge this doesn't have this fellow also this also okay and then of course this is little farther h is farther please don't think that it is actually so all these guys will not have a designated bridge so you can fill them with a dotted line uh, directly because we are not going through another bridge to reach a root bridge okay uh, b can also be b7 right okay what is b and what is b7 okay for the land segment b b7 why are you saying that okay where is b okay please remember i am not going to send any traffic to b7 if anybody wants to send anything okay suppose it wants to send a packet which is outside of this okay it doesn't know you don't know which host is where right in a, all of them are same land segment all the traffic that i am going to generate from b is going to take this path it is not going to be sent on this remember that we have already made that dotted line i am saying you are filling up this thing after the stp has been formulated okay already we have constructed the uh uh spanning tree okay got it harshit okay so uh, you are not going to choose b7 now okay then you are violating the uh, stp algorithm itself right so okay now where is our friend g that is also not uh, having any designated bridge what about h now you can tell me will you choose will you say b4 as the designated bridge it is connected please don't do that always you look look up on the route root bridge your path to root bridge now b4 is not the path to root bridge okay if you go here you will never reach root bridge okay so always you have to send it up in the hierarchy so for h also dotted okay it's not b4 though it is connected in this case b4 sorry lan b you i gave an exp explanation that it is not connected so you have to choose this but in this case you have having a two links which are active but still you will not choose them because it is not taking you to the root bridge okay okay i will admit i don't know i didn't see what the name of this okay uh, i don't know there is empty message okay what about i very i and j very very trivial 
बिफोर एंड हु इज लेफ्ट के इज लेफ्ट एंड के इज ऑल्सो बी सेवन ए वेरी ट्रिवियल ओके सर इफ यू पास थ्रू टू ब्रिजेस विच ब्रिज कम बिकम डिजिनेट ब्रिज ओके दे आर वन विच इज कनेक्टेड इमीडिएटली ओके द ब्रिज विच इज कनेक्टेड इमीडिएटली इज अ डिजिनेट ब्रिज एंड इट लैंड हेयर एंड दिस लैंड विल हैव डिजिनेट ब्रिज लेट मी टेक एन एग्जाम्पल नाउ uh which is having uh, is there anybody who is having two hops from the road bridge no nobody is having two hops so i can't give you an example of see each land designated bridges one immediate to you which will take you to this okay suppose in there is a one more bridge in between before they reaching the bridge road bridge no issues for this land the designated bridge is this okay the immediate guy who is connected to the uh, intermediate the immediate node which is connected to okay that's all i hope this is clear now okay good actually got it okay now let me write it down okay which are the designated bridges of each land and which is invalidated bridge okay i have already shown you a yeah, bridge which is who is having all the links which are disabled okay the bridge which is not connected through any means into the spanning tree they are there but they are not connected into the spanning tree by any means now can you choose two intermediate bridge sorry invalid bridges yes you can choose this guy is also an inval invalidated bridge completely invalidated whereas this is not a invalidated bridge because it has still some link to the root bridge it is still alive it is part of the spanning tree the bridges which are not part of the spanning tree they become completely if they are not part of the spanning tree they become invalidated bridge so you, i may ask you to Identify the invalidated bridges and designated bridges given a spanning tree. We don't know. There may be many questions and many type of questions. So uh, all will be interesting. Okay. Uh, let me see. Okay. B six and B three. Avishi. Yes, you are right. So that's what is the uh, invalidated uh, invalidated bridges. Okay. So I hope this is clear now. Right. Now let us. You know, interesting part is actually still pending. How this is going to happen without you and me? telling which are the bridges are going to be invalidated which are the going to be uh, designated bridges which are the links are fully completely disabled all is going to happen on its own without you doing anything and you have an algorithm running the same program runs on all the bridges so interesting thing is you write the program which is from the http tree or part of the spanning tree protocol and the same program runs on all the bridges and they all Talk to each other and come up with the conclusion that this is the spanning tree that I am going to follow, which is very interesting, right? So let us now look at that part of it now. Anai Sony is late. Okay, or he lost lost in between. Okay, fine. Now implementation part. Implementation is not done so far. We doing it is not implementation. Please remember, I just told you algorithm is I explain and then how I will apply as an algorithm or as an outsider. sitting at the it admin and then do, doing the job instead of each bridges doing themselves now we are going to look at the algorithm which is going to run on each of the bridges and the bridges themselves come up with this particular configuration they uh, they are going to come up with this uh, configuration okay i think i exceeded the time limit uh, please uh, feel free to drop off in case if you are to catch bus or something to come back to the uh, college i will complete it for the sake of completion and the video will be available okay so i hope the video is happening uh, i think so yeah okay so please uh, um, feel free to drop off i am not going to question you uh, but you can hang around uh, to be there alive or you may get the recording later okay so let me not stop uh, just because of the time limit let me complete it okay i hope it is fine with you can can some of you or one of you respond i don't know nobody can say everything is fine uh, then you may be i think you are maybe hungry but 1 uh, o'clock is the hunger time right so please uh, bear with me i will complete it as soon as possible now okay so identifying the spanning tree configuration automatically without any manual intervention since networks are dynamic and large it is not possible to sit and do this spanning tree manually okay when any of the bridges fail or a new bridge is added to a network they have to adjust themselves okay they are they have to defend themselves okay we are not there to monitor them uh, that's how our network is running okay internet is running i think you might have seen some recent news that there was one uh, bridge uh, sorry uh, under cable under under sea cable was cut in red sea 
um, between Europe and Asia, which is connecting Europe and Asia, and that got adjusted by taking some uh, no default route uh, through some other service provider. Okay, in that kind of a situation, maybe uh, intervention, manual intervention, may be required. They may be notified, but some small cable coming off or a rat in a in your office, you know, college or somewhere is getting cutting one particular LAN cable connecting two bridges. You cannot expect somebody to come from all the way in the midnight to make the connections alive. It will adjust themselves. That's what we are talking about now. So when any other bridges fail, they should adapt themselves. Spanning new spanning fee should be configured. Any link failures are also to be detected. Not only bridge failing, even uh, uh, a particular link failing also should be adjusted. Bridges in the network do not have the knowledge of the entire topology. Remember again, to start with, before the STP runs, even after the STP runs, they don't have the entire knowledge. You cannot ask on bridge to question and say that, uh, who is the you know, uh, bridge on the way to root bridge you have? No, they don't know. Okay. If you ask, even if you provide an interface for doing it, it will not know. It may not have to know, it may not know. Okay. Somehow, they find out. Okay. There is a possibility to do it, but that's not our intent. Okay. So, bridges in the network do not have the knowledge of the entire topology of the network, even after the STP is run. Only they know that I have a designated bridge. I, If I send it on this port or to the designated bridge, it will reach the root bridge. Okay. And it know, it also knows who is the root bridge. Okay. So, al algorithm should take care of identifying it and finding the spanning tree. And the bridges exchange a configuration message. Now, how do I make it happen? I need to make sure that the configuration messages are exchanged between them to do two things. It has to find the root bridge. Not only one bridge deciding somebody is a root bridge. The entire LAN segment or entire network, all the bridges agree on one guy being the root bridge. Okay, one uh, net, uh, one bridge being the root bridge. They all have to agree, and then each one of them will say that okay, I have my designated bridge, and then I will pass it on. Then then that link has to be uh, maintained. Okay. Now, what is the configuration message and how is it done? I will explain you quickly now. When the network is powered up for the first time with various bridges on the links, no bridge is identified as a root bridge. Okay. Now, when the election is starting, it's going to start now. We don't know who is the prime minister or which party is going to be leading uh, in the count. We don't know. We are starting afresh and then we are going to do the selection based on the election and then finally the selection is there. Same way, when the bridges come up, you may think that maybe some network is running and one bridge is coming up in the middle. That is also possible. I am just thinking of the worst case scenario when everything is coming up for the first time. Now, what should you think? What do you think each bridge will assume? Okay. Just a query to you. You can just answer your question in your mind. What should the bridges think when they come up and they know that they are part of a network and the STP algorithm is going to run? And they have to now take a decision who is going to be the root bridge. Now, natural, right? Uh, uh, everybody is selfish. Uh, to be, you know, being a, uh, you cannot say that I am not the root bridge. Okay, everybody aspires for when you join the college, you don't know who is going to be the topper. Everybody thinks I am going to be the topper, right? I also thought so. I did not, but that's how we think, and we should think, of course. Okay, I, that I am going to top the entire batch, going to get the gold medal. All of us should think of it. And, Always, right? That's what all the bridges are going to do. I am going to be the root bridge because I don't have any information about any other bridge in the network. Maybe possible that I am the only bridge in the network. Then if I give up the option that I am not the root bridge, then who is going to take care of the entire land, right? Entire network. There is a possibility that one bridge is only handling all the land traffic. Then it's natural to think that I am the root bridge to start with. So, Till you are told that, hey, you are not alone, you are not alone, there are some people. Like, if if I am the only student in the class and the uh, entire batch, I am the only student, I can easily assume if I complete the entire course by all clearing all the necessary requirements, I am going to get the gold medal, okay? Or if you are the only person running in the race, yeah, you, they will not give you all the bronze and, sil bronze and silver medal, but at least they will give you gold medal, right? If you are the only person participating in the race, so that's how each bit thinks when they come. So all the bridges start sending the following configuration message on all its ports, and they are supposed to send information. They don't know. They cannot take uh, assume that there are no other bridges in the network. So they have to send a configuration message, and they have to inform three information. Okay. What is my ID? 
what is my id okay because you are assuming that you are the root page but you may be thrown out and shown that you are not the root page because i have another bridge in the network which is having a lower id than you then better listen to that and agree okay you are my root bridge in my network so you can you are told like a mac address which is being registered within this device every bridge is having a id which is registered it could be in a rom or somewhere configuration that admin has to do okay that uh, manually has to be done assume that it is done so the each i the id of the bridge that is sending the message so you are now exchanging information because you don't know how, who else is there in the network so every bridge comes up and then it is going to send a configuration message on all the ports remember it is not going to decide now that i am going to disable something no you cannot take any decision because you are not even shows up you know uh, decided on the stp algorithm and the configuration so the id of what the sending bridge believes to be the root bridge now what are the three information you have to send my own id my own id okay sorry about the uh, handwriting my own id and whom do i think whom do i think is the root bridge of this network now when i am starting my own id is the my id is the root bridge so i don't know the existence of anybody else so why should i even give an option that someone else is the uh, uh, root bridge right i i am the root bridge right so and then what is the distance measured in hops now if i think i am the root bridge i will my hop is zero from the root bridge okay i am the root bridge right what is the distance to reach me nothing so the message format is who it's not a decision final decision okay i am saying whom i think is the root bridge at this moment and it's my own id is x x is the parameter given for uh, any unknown right so x is the my own id and who is i think is a root bridge and who what is the distance i have from my me to the root bridge okay that is the distance hop distance it can be integer only not a floating point don't say 2.3556 so this is the information i am going to send every root node every node bridge in the network is going to send this configuration message now if i ask you the question what would be the configuration message that they send you can assume you can in fact tell them now i am going to take a simple network which we initially thought initially uh, learned that it is having a loop and they are going to have a circular movement now we are going to run the stp algorithm on this particular simple network two bridges are there and we are going to uh, run the stp algorithm on it let us understand this first before even going to the you know uh, uh, d will be zero yes initially d will be zero okay now can you tell me you can chat on the chat window you can tell me okay i want to see how much uh, how many of you are able to draw the stp of this particular first of all draw the tree and then draw the stp and which are the ports are going to be active which are going to be invalidated and please name the root bridge and invalidated bridge if at all so or designated bridge there are only hardly two bridges in this and uh, uh, draw it on the um, paper and then tell me whom do you choose as a root bridge now on chat window anybody can say who is going to be the root bridge here okay okay kartikeya sharma is selecting b1 of course naturally all of you would have selected because that's a lower id now can you tell me what should i enable default remember the algorithm once the root bridge is selected what was the next algorithm mentioned how many lands this particular how many lands are there in this particular tree there are two lands how many lands are connecting to the root bridge two do i have to connect both of them should i make both of them dot line yes or no somebody can sorry somebody can tell me whether b1 is going to have active links to both lan1 and lan2 or not yes or no yes so because root bridge has to be connected to all the lan okay then only you can later on worry about how do i reach 
okay uh, all the lands right okay durga prasad reddy also is saying yes so now can you tell me whether b2 is i am talking about b2 okay once i get the answer okay i cannot assume that two people answering assume that all the 100 students are answering but b2 is ib or db or it can't be rb okay because all of you agreed that rb is our friend b1 because he has a, he or she has a lower id now b2 should it be invalidated bridge or should it be a designated bridge for any land okay you said that this is short dot line okay i take it then should it be dotted line or should it be short dot solid line based on that you have to say whether it is a designated bridge or ib let me see the answer uh db ib okay i am getting both let me not reveal who is correct uh please think about it when do i need db okay when do i need a db i have a shortest path to a root bridge okay now bit b2 b2 is connected directly to b1 or not so let me draw the unless i draw the uh, stp i can't even explain you let me bring our friend b all of you have agreed that he is our boss she is our boss now i think i should call she because it is invented by a lady so she is the boss now who is lan 1 this guy is lan 1 lan 2 sorry now all of you agreed that it's a solid line now where is our friend b2 is sitting is it is there any on the way is there any uh, any bridge is there the distance is zero right the distance of uh, b1 distance to b1 is zero because actually he can reach the um, this bridge on the same land okay they are in the they are both of them are connected okay uh, so there is no distance okay now please think here they are the b2 is connected to two lands not two other bridges so if you have to choose the designated bridge only if you are connected to another bridge through this to reach the root bridge now you are actually connected directly to b1 right in front in between lan only is coming so i don't know whether i can convince you all of you or at least kartikeya sharma okay b1 alone can handle both lands so ib very good so no need for b2 now see root bridge is okay you are you have got a point correct point rb is b1 okay i am writing it in other way both the traffic let land 1 wants to send or land 2 wants to send okay they can go through this right why should somebody else come in the way that's a this guy is only causing the problem of looping right why should that person be around knock him off so knock her off so i'm very using very wrong statement okay very derogatory statement please don't mistake me so this is going to be dotted line okay now let me think from here only okay now make you think okay you uh, how uh, exchanges or messages are exchanged we will come to that now um, you have taken a decision that b1 is invalidated bridge and our friend b1 is rb she is going to take care of both the traffics on this lan and this lan so b2 doesn't have to do any job but what if b1 fails or this lan is gone this link is gone this link only is gone any one of the conditions okay two three conditions can happen b1 fails or link from b1 to lan1 fails or link from b1 to lan2 fails if that happens any one of this condition happens one of them 
what will happen can you tell me if b1 fails or one of the links connected either connecting to lan1 or lan2 fails what will happen okay let me see the what do you think b2 will take over okay i am not saying what will be the impact of b1 going off b can only be reached through b2 okay now don't say d now you you don't bring the host now you have to talk about only lan2 please our stp algorithm doesn't doesn't even know the existence of d just this picture has please don't bring d no um, i am not uh, harsh on you but i'm just saying saying uh, think like a stp algorithm okay uh, sumeda said i am getting late to leave okay okay please get you don't have to inform me you can carry on now what do you think i should do shall i continue uh, shall i do the poll or uh, we are in the tick of things so i think this lecture can go on uh, that's my feeling because as I, as I, I have to remind you many things so uh, it will be db okay uh, it will become db uh, what is db designated bridge who will become designated bridge no actually who will become b2 will take over b2 will become rb yes aniket is correct it's not db see if you want db there should be one more bridge for you to reach uh, rb okay those bridges are only dbs or okay designated bridges so there is nobody else to take you to root bridge because root bridge itself is gone so somebody has to take control of the network okay uh, nobody is there now it's uh, up and out right only two bridges were there and one guy one person is gone so uh, okay let me erase all of them sorry oh i'm sorry okay so let me complete it guys so i uh, i think you got it right uh, at least at least aniket got it right very good uh, ashit got it right b1 failed b2 will take over and uh, uh, your uh, uh, stp will become upside down now b2 will take in the top and b1 will come down and it will, doesn't even exist and both l1 and l2 are connected to b2 okay so i hope this is clear i am explaining all this in this video because everything goes into the uh, right hand okay what do you want me to say please talk uh, sir like b2 will become root bridge only if b1 is disabled right if the link to port 2 is gone from b1 it will still be root and b2 becomes designated right wait a minute now uh, that's a good question okay let me just hold on uh, assume the situation that this fellow is gone okay uh, sorry not writing this is gone okay now if you make a designated bridge what are you trying to say i will reach land to okay let me say uh, let me draw the picture okay you are making designated bridge i agree with you let us go with your decision okay um uh, and you think that okay uh, our friend uh, b1 is still continues to be rb okay now if you think so what will happen okay this is solid anyway b1 did not fail we thought only this fellow is gone this link is gone now you still think b2 is the designated bridge to b1 first of all calling as a designated bridge itself is wrong because you are directly connected okay now now even then now what are you trying trying to tell any traffic uh coming to b anyway you are there now okay now tell me what is the role of this whole thing first of all uh, stp is broken in this uh, scenario okay uh, this is the ro road bridge and then um, yeah so uh, uh, this is the road bridge and we cannot have uh, a designated bridge first of all to another bridge which is taking you to the root bridge now shortest path now for this now what traffic will you send it here okay whatever you expect uh, you know get it from land to if that is communication is happening between this you don't have to send it here anyway it will not go come back here right i you don't want it to happen now what happens on land one also you don't have to send it to this okay already this guy is listening now what is the role of this designated bridge as such there is nothing there is it's not going to play any role there so in my uh, no uh, if at all i have to convince you if one guy is broken here even then it it is not first of all it is violating one more rule let me tell you 
for you to be a road bridge you should have a connectivity to all you know uh, all the ports which are connected to you should have a valid link with you okay you have not violated that now i have a no connection to this uh, land too okay so calling this as a road bridge actually solves the problem of you satisfy the conditions of being connected all the uh, links are so maybe i have to uh, maybe investigate some more a root bridge if if one links to any of the lands fails they disqualify to be a root bridge i don't know whether that can be taken that i can make a statement i will validate that particular uh, thing but in this case at least i can convince you that giving up control to b2 completely as a root bridge as a makes sense okay uh so we cannot connect d and e through b2 to rb uh so so we cannot connect d and e through b2 okay d and e are on this side no why do you need a b2 for d and e to talk to first of all you don't need right they are in the same lan please don't forget that i told you the bridges are intelligent enough they learn any communication mac okay this forwarding table is still there they will only send the traffic to only a and c are the destination mac addresses and they will not even have an entry for d and e saying that send it to this port one no because d and e are on the same side they would have learned it see that is already happening okay please remember the learning that they do based on the mac addresses are still happening and they will not unnecessarily send the traffic on to some other port now when they get the traffic belonging to something which is not on the same side of the fence what decision they need to take that is what we are discussing now okay they cannot keep on sending to everybody they cannot send the traffic which belongs to this guy to on this okay so those things are we are discussing and we don't want d and e to be even sent across to port one okay so uh, what is the time oh we are already exceeding one limit okay i will stop at one at whatever happens so changing the route bridge to b2 in case of link failure is better option than making r2 as a db okay um uh, as per the policy or uh, stp they are supposed to have a valid connection the route bridge whoever is selected should have a valid connection to all the lands okay um, but that also maybe we can uh, uh, forego i am not sure whether it is very strict or not we have to see that uh, in some scenario maybe you can still call somebody as a route bridge even if one link of that is gone and we can still connect it but that has to be decision has to be taken after the entire um, um, Thing is that okay? Maybe I will uh, go with the, what uh, uh, Kartikeya says. Just because of this link going down, let us not make this fellow lose the uh, root bridge ability. But only when he cannot reach on. Uh, uh, actually, uh, it can be that it can still continue to be RB and they they can still talk to each other. Okay, so that is possible. Okay, but I am taking the uh, rule saying that the root bridge has to be connected. all the lands and uh, as per that particular uh, thing is this guy loses the um, cap no um, eligibility to be a root bridge okay based on that condition but still the land one and land two can be connected okay through b2 because one of the links going down make make sure that it is not going to form a loop okay we are not creating a loop now okay um because even if this guy wants to uh, create a loop it is not going to happen okay so that way we are protecting it um, from the loop formation okay this is a little tricky uh, scenario okay uh, but bridge going is rule out no there is no uh, debate also at all b1 completely gone b2 wins it um, but b1 only uh, loses one connection to land 2 i am claiming that it should Uh, no if that all it has a connection it should be you know alive based on that reason they lose the uh, uh, you know credibility to be a root bridge but okay there still it's not going to create a loop so but unnecessarily you know there will be a entry in the forwarding you know uh, forwarding table which um, which will not actually create any problem because it knows that it cannot send anything here so you know there is no way see this guy cannot even when he has only two links and it cannot even send a traffic on a particular link i think it loses the eligibility to be a root bridge okay so in my case i stick with what i have chosen um, unless uh, something else i come up with okay so okay let me now explain you to quickly what is the message being exchanged 
the message being exchanged is B1 says that I am the root bridge. Okay, this is the root bridge. Okay, whom whom he thinks is the root bridge, he or she thinks, and what is my ID? My ID. Okay, and then similarly B2 also thinks that I am the root bridge, and I my ID is B2. Okay, this is the message which is being configuration message which is generated, and remember, it will be sent on all the ports. Okay, all the ports. It is a broadcast message, and STP messages are. Over and above the uh, no STP uh, uh, no links in the beginning all the links are enabled and they exchange okay so what happens what is the action taken by the bridges when they receive the messages on both end now can you tell me what will B one do when it receives this configuration message either to this or this no problem it is not going to forward it please remember it is not going to create a loop of STP now okay um, uh, at least that much of intelligence it will have. And uh, what it will do, okay, uh, because it has sent the configuration message already, it, its own messages are broadcast and then let me tell you what is happening. Um, it will forward on other port only if it has made some changes based on the configuration message it has received. Okay, It has made some change to its own assumption. Now, let us think from the B1 perspective. It thought that she is the boss. Okay, right now, and then it sends a broadcast to both before even that's received by this person. B2 sends a broadcast, says, I am the boss, okay, I am the root bridge. Now, what does B1 do? B1 compares its own ID with the message which is coming in saying that I am the root bridge. Should it listen to it? No. I, you cannot claim that you are the root bridge because I have an ID which is lower than you. Sorry, I will ignore your message. So, B1 ignores this message. Okay. And then says, I believe in my assumption as long as you send me something lower than my own ID. Now, you send me something more, so I will not listen to you. So, B1 continues to think that it is the root bridge. Okay. I hope this is clear to you. Now think from this this uh, B2's perspective. It receives the configuration message from B1 saying that I am the root bridge and my distance to root bridge because myself is a root bridge and my ID is B1. Now B2 better listen. Okay. There is no, uh, everybody has to follow. The same code is running. Okay? It's not that the individual human being is sitting there and trying to be a boss. The same logic is there. So they will listen to each other. Now B2, now can you tell me what should B2 do when it listens to the message and it has to take action or not. The first question is, should it even change its own assumption of what it thought initially and what should be the new assumption now? Can somebody message me on what's, you know, uh, not WhatsApp, uh, uh, on chat, what should be to do and then should it change its own configuration? Okay. Uh, Sorry, I already revealed the answer as usual. B2 changes root node to B1 and in the configuration message. Yes, you are right. That's what I showed you. So it has to now listen to B1's message, okay? Because they have to be honest with what they assume. So now, okay, I did not show the thing. That message is landing here and then the decision is to be taken. And okay. Now, you may wonder why should I keep it as a 1, okay? Let me explain. Uh, where is it? See, you may think that it is connected directly and, you know, why should it make it 1? Let me give an example, okay? Uh, this configuration message, B2, B1 is a root bridge, okay? And I am away from there as a 1, okay? And my ID is B1, B2. Why is it doing it? Because imagine it is not connected to B1 and there is some LAN, some, some other bridge here, B5 and going there. Okay. Okay. So assume this way. Okay. Um, this is not connected to B1 as such. Okay. This is a very, um, this bridge itself is parallelly connected to both the RB. So get a confusion. But suppose if it is not the case and then it is connected down the line in the tree, this B2 is here and B5 is here. In that case, what should it do? Okay, uh, let me uh, just make it uh, visible to you. 
root bridge is R1, okay. B2 is sitting here and then B5, some other B5 is connected here, which is not on the same, you know, connected directly to root bridge. Then what should the configuration message of this guy, when it is sharing it with B5, it should say that I am one level below, you know, I, you have to come through me to reach RB, right. So it has to say that I am one half, you know, down. Okay, I am directly connected. So, if you, you can recall whatever was the tree that we draw, all the second level bridges have to say that I am one hop away from you. Okay, for the other guys to know. Okay, it is the not uh, directly. Okay, this guy will say I am zero. Okay, because it is a root bridge. But all the people who are down connected, they are one bridge. Okay, anybody coming to reach a root bridge, they have to cross this bridge and go right. So they have to say the distance as one for others to know. Okay, it's not. They themselves are one half away. Okay, that little bit of uh, even I had a doubt whether I am right or not, but I am convinced now that you know that it has to update the uh, its own configuration as B one comma one comma B two. Okay. Uh, any change? If R one has to send a configuration message to B five. Okay. Who is R one? Okay, B one. Okay. Uh, R1 or I don't know what is R1. You are talking about B2. I, I only assume that B2 is ah uh, B5. The hops will be two, right? No, there is no. I don't know what is R1 here. Uh, in my picture, okay. Let me tell you. Um, B1 is uh, B1 is a root bridge, and B2 has come. Its own configuration message says that I am. Uh, sorry, I assume. I presume now, I agree that B1 is the root bridge now and I am one half away from there and my own my ID is B2. Now suppose it sends it to uh, some other guy B5. Now what will B5 think? Okay, I am now you know, one half away and I will assume that I can reach you only through this and if it has to send to somebody, it will say that you, know, you have to come through to, to reach me. So, whatever the configuration message it has, that's what it's going to send it to somebody, okay. Um, see, that is how the information is spreading. It's like a um, some rumor going across, okay. Initially, it will be a rumor, okay, because all of them have not converged on who is the root bridge. So, they will pass some wrong information to others and then they learn from each other and they finally conclude. So, it actually takes a little bit of more time to introspect this particular exchange of information and then to come up with the final configuration, what they will be exchanging. So, you know, so the, it will be difficult. I, uh, after having listened to it, uh, maybe you can uh, now understand the philosophy. Okay. Let me complete it to uh, completeness sake. Let me cover it all this and then we can have a discussion sometime later. Okay. Uh, okay. So guys, B1, 1, B2. Okay. That's what is the increment. B2 increment the distance by 1 because it is 1 half away from the root. For somebody else, please remember this is the information it is supposed to send it to someone else. And if it is sending it, I cannot say that I am zero because it is one half away. So someone wants to reach this guy B2 to reach uh, no, to go to be a root bridge, it is a one half away. Okay. So I hope I convinced you. Okay. So example uh, messages across. Let us coordinate further what happens at B1 in the current scenario. Now um, let us continue further now okay let me read it out based on the message received from b1 b2 knows that it is no longer the root okay it is no longer the root so it will only forward the configuration messages it receives from other bridges so what will happen is b2 is now realizes that i am not the root now anymore so it stops generating its own configuration message okay it stops generating its own configuration message now it leaves it to the B1 to send the configuration message, okay. But it will also it will forward some other message it receives. Why there may be somebody who is not directly connected to B1, okay. Like what I said, B5. It is not directly connected to B1. In case if it is there, B2 is in between. Now, if it is sending a message, it is supposed to forward it, okay. And then it also should inform if B5 down the line assume that he, you know, she is the root bridge. Now. B2 has to say, hey, sorry, you know, you are having a wrong notion that you are the root bridge because you are not directly connected to root bridge. I am directly connected and I got to know that B1 is the root bridge. So it will send that information back to B5, correcting the assumptions that are there in each one of their uh, bridges. Okay. It involves little more, you uh, know, uh, introspection and then trying to understand what happens. 
okay i urge you to read the book okay i will show you one scenario and then i will make you i conclude it okay i am sorry i am taking more time please bear with me uh, i don't know how many of you are still around but uh, okay since uh, now since b2 knows that root bridge is on its port 1 shorter distance than itself okay b2 knows okay it is on p1 shorter distance to b1 uh, it does not have to forward any frames received on port 1 okay it doesn't have to receive anything it does not have to forward any message it receives because already b1 would have seen it so b2 disables its own port 1 okay it, you know in very natural that you know already root bridge is connected and i don't need to inform uh, anything on this bridge because whatever happens here i can actually root bridge also will know so it will disable port 1 so b2 disables own port 1 including configuration messages on its port it stops sending any configuration messages on port 1 and then uh, what happens on rest of it then now b1 sent the same its own configuration message on port 2 okay now which bridge to receives through port 2 which is active now now since own assumption of see whatever it receives on the root bridge okay that that link has to be disabled because root bridge is there on it right that directly because it is receiving it with zero message okay uh, it is directly coming from our uh, manager uh, manager of the network so it knows what is happening on that port okay it doesn't have to inform anything or even it doesn't have to send any traffic because Uh, if at all any uh, anything to be forwarded, it will take care of it. Right? Uh, that's why I said that it has to be enabled on both. So always, okay, to uh, come back to you, uh, whether one side is gone, you cannot, you know, if we are disconnected from one of the LAN, you have to give up your root bridge, uh, 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 no credibility or uh, ownership because you have to be connected on all the ports wherever you are there. Okay, so uh, we uh, B2 is assuming that you are on this side, so you it will. Uh, uh, take care of communicating with the land one similarly if it receives in this message then b2 knows that b1 is on the same land too so i don't need to inform anything coming uh, you know to b2 root bridge root bridge already aware of so based on that direct message is coming how does it know it is directly connected the distance okay distance from root bridge because it itself is saying i am zero so both will be disabled okay i want you to go through it again and come back with the uh, any doubts you have okay now you can draw the spanning tree i want you to uh, read through this okay i am not going to spend time on reading through this but actually it will give you some more insight into what is happening okay before i close it i want to take one example with our bigger tree okay um, now it is from the extract from the book okay i will show you this and then xa you know uh, uh, i will explain this and stop please bear with me for 2 minutes assume power on on power on all the bridges are initialized okay let us monitor what would happen on the bridge d3 as the distributed http algorithm runs on it okay now we are only taking care of monitoring what is happening in one one bridge okay um, all bridges are initialized now i am not saying that entire http is converged now it's a convergence okay it is not converged now and uh, let us uh, just look at one sample okay it is very difficult to you know there are different scenarios to take care of uh, for you to really get convinced that this whole thing works okay uh, but at least we'll take one sample now now what would b3 receive okay where all it can receive configuration message it can receive from this b2 and b5 because all of them are broadcasting the configuration messages on all their ports it is starting initialize means they are all powered up okay that's what i meant by initialize now we have to have some order in it so i am order, assuming that b3 receive b2 0 b2 why b2 assumes that i am the root bridge because it has not learned from b1 yet so it doesn't know that b1 exists in the network so b2 says it's giving a wrong information okay no no problem but that's what it assumes it's not that knowingly it shares the wrong information it believes itself that it's a root bridge so it sends it to b3 now what does b3 do will it believe it no since 2 is lower than 3 b3 accepts okay sorry uh, it's other way around B2 accepts now because B3 is higher than B2, so it should you should believe B2 because there is a possibility that B1 doesn't even exist in the network. Then B2 has to uh, genuinely root bridge, right? So there is a uh, you have to trust till you are told that you have another authentic information that what you assumed was wrong. So B3 assumes that B2 is the root. Now B3 adds one to the distance. See again, I am telling you, even if it comes from here. it is adding one that's why when i did for that i did one there because 
I I am not uh, cooking up story. I am cooking up story from the book. So B one has to be done because it is it is the this information is for someone else. Okay, please don't think that it is for itself. It is for someone else to say that I am one hop away from the bridge, root bridge. So it does that, and then it is sending it towards B five. So it doesn't have to send it through this path again because it is received from here only, and it has taken the accepted the decision. If it has not accepted the decision, it should confirm back to you. Hey, you are not the root bridge. Okay, I have a, a recent information. Maybe through some other path, I got to know that B one is the root bridge. So please change your assumption. In that case, it has to inform back to the sender. But right now, B three is going with B two. Okay, it doesn't have anything to say to say it is wrong. Okay, so it is going to send it to B five. That B two is the root bit. Okay, I know that B two is the root bit. I, I assume, I presume B two is the root bit, and that person she is one hop away from me, and my own ID is B three. Now. Imagine a situation. In meanwhile, B two accepts B one as the root because it has the lawyer ready. It sends it towards B three. Now, meanwhile, B two, who is the B two? Our friend is here. It accepts it. We directly connected to B one, right? It would have received a message saying that I am the boss. I am the zero distance. I am my root ID is B one. This message would have come to this B two. Then it as it its assumption was wrong. And it actually not only that it had a wrong assumption, it confused B three also, right? And B three would have confused B five also. Now everybody has to be informed that hey, sorry, I sent a wrong message to you. Uh, maybe I hope this doesn't happen in the exam hall. That you thought initially the option is A, and someone says some authentic source you get B. Then you are so genuine to send the message back to the person you said the option was A. Then you correct it. Oh my God, I I think. Maybe if you are into this kind of uh, exchange of information, you will appreciate this better than me. Uh, <laughs> I'm not saying that you are doing it, but I'm just saying that you can connect with real life scenario. Okay, you confuse someone saying that I am the boss, or you not only that you said I am the boss, you said that B two is the boss. Now B two says learns that oh I am not you know, any more a boss. B one is the boss. Then it has a you know responsibility to inform B three also because it it confused that. So B five accept now B three what does it do B two sorry I am saying too many B three B two okay meanwhile B two accept B one as a root okay and then it sends B one one B two to B three okay it is correcting it now I earlier I told you this please correct your own configuration message now B one is the boss okay now B five accepts it now okay this happened B five accept B one as a root now B five also is connected directly okay. is not accepting what this guy has told this guy said that uh, b2 is the boss right b, uh, towards b5 it received this message as b2 is the boss and i am b3 and it also receives a message that b0 no, sorry b1 is my, i am b1 i am the boss now it sends it now whom will you believe you have to believe b1 because it is b1 is shorter and b5 wants always to be connected to b1 through the shortest path not through this path okay it doesn't like the uh, taking this path right even if b2 is a b2 is boss is itself is wrong and later on even if it corrects itself b1 b1 it says that i am one hop away from b1 you should not take this message also because designated bridge is not no longer here i am connected to a shortest path to b1 so i will go with that so please that's the reason that b1 is connected to everybody and sends a configuration message So this is what happened, and B three accepts now B one as the root. Now B three also accepts B five also accepts. This is how messages go across, and all of them converge on this being the B one. And then what does the B five do? The decision of the short shortest path will be decided, and actually it has decided that this is the shortest path, and it has made a dotted line, and this is a designated port. Okay, or this is the DB. Okay, uh, for I don't know uh, for B. Okay, because this is a dotted line, so this is a designated bridge for this bridge to come here. Okay, so that's how it happens. Now, why should that happen? Uh, what will happen is each bridge is finding a shortest path to the root. So, and then when there is a tie between who will be the connected to this, that decision will be taken. 
by these bridges whoever is having the lower id so they will think that i am the designated bridge for uh, land b not you okay b5 will say b7 or b5 b7 will give up uh, between when they exchange messages across them they will decide now who is the designated bridge for b because i am having a lower id so that way this is resolved because the distance is same you think of that perspective okay so it will converge okay believe me and that's what will happen okay so i am sorry to hold you till this time please read through all this and uh, you can uh, come back okay i will stop here um, and any i am not going to ask you any doubts now okay it's uh, too long okay guys thanks for all your patience and uh, we will i don't know how to resolve it in the next uh, uh, all of you together we'll see okay thank you all of you for patient listening and i hope it was useful and you learned uh, this better now okay i will